The number of coronavirus infections in Germany has crossed the grim milestone of 200,000. And two major biotechnological giants in Germany, Kervac and BioNTech, are in the race to find a vaccine for this deadly disease. Now we have our correspondent from the German public international broadcaster, DW, Stephen Beardsley, joining us live from Berlin for more on this. Good afternoon. Thanks for being with us. New cases do remain low in Germany, but the country is racing to find a vaccine for the virus. Now we know the two companies are among the front runners, and uh, both of them have begun human trials. What is the latest? That's right. They have begun human trials. BioNTech, one of the companies you mentioned, is probably a little bit further along. It's in phase two, actually combined phase one, phase two, which means that they're testing hundreds of people right now. Phase three would be the next step. That would be uh, testing much larger numbers of people, probably tens of thousands. Right now, there are very few companies in that area. It looks like uh, Moderna uh, in the USA is the closest to approaching phase three, and that should be later this month. Uh, CureVac, you mentioned, CureVac is beginning phase one or has begun phase one recently, so it's a little bit further behind. It does, however, have the support of the EU Investment Bank, which has put in 75 million euros to help it boost its capacity, its production capacity, as well as the German government, Berlin, giving it 300 million euros, that rather, I should say, buying a 300 million euro stake to help ensure that CureVac can meet its requirements in terms of production that, to encourage it to uh, make further development. So CureVac out of Tübingen has uh, really a head start in many ways in terms of financing. It also has a number of production sites that means that once things are approved, it really could turn on production in a way that maybe few others can. BioNTech, though, a little bit further along. Right. And Stephen, coronavirus cases overall in Europe, uh, we know what the numbers are, but uh, still obviously lots of questions about lockdown measures. Um, in case, uh, if cases erupt, uh, what can you tell us about the Europe situation? That's right. You're right. The cases are down in general, though there are some hot spots still across the region. You do see in France, for example, that there is an uptick in cases right now. And France has actually just imposed a mandatory mask requirement for all public indoor spaces, showing that they do take it seriously if something were to erupt again. The big question right now is travel and what happens when people come back from travel hotspots. Travel has been loosened, travel restrictions rather, have been loosened in recent weeks. That means that travelers from the UK can potentially go to Greece, for example. Travelers from Germany can go to Mallorca, a favorite hotspot in the Mediterranean. What happens when they come back after they've mixed with many other nationals from different countries? What will the testing regiment look like? That's a big question for all these nations. How do you test? Are there enough tests? Um, what kind of time period do you need to have a clean test before you can go out again into the community? Going back to uh, the two companies that you mentioned earlier, CureVac and BioNTech, both leading the way in Germany for a vaccine. How far along are the two companies compared with, uh, you did mention the international companies, but especially uh, companies in the U.S. and Canada? I think uh, concerning U.S. and Canada, I don't think they're quite as far along as, uh, for example, Moderna I mentioned in the U.S. It's probably the furthest along, uh, closest to a phase three. So uh, there are funding efforts that are considerable in the U.S. There is the so-called warp speed effort to throw uh, a lot of money at companies that haven't yet gotten so far, but to basically speed up the process. Uh, so you see uh, an effort and a level of resources in the U.S. that frankly uh, are hard to match probably in the EU, but you also have a level of um, expertise. You have some companies that are here in Germany and elsewhere in the EU, including in the U.K., AstraZeneca, uh, working on a project with several nations in the EU. Uh, so you do see progress on both sides, I would say. Right. And we have seen in Europe, as well as the U.S., uh, the effectiveness of a drug called remdesivir. It's been the first drug to show uh, effective treatment against COVID-19. What can you tell us about this drug? Yeah, remdesivir, as you mentioned, it is the one, the, the, the drug that so far showed the most effective treatment in especially severe COVID cases. It helps speed up recovery. Uh, there have been studies that have really pointed to its effectiveness, and therefore it's become a very desired drug. The problem is that the company making it right now is Gilead Sciences in the U.S., and their stock has been almost completely bought out by the U.S. 
Uh, it's a very unusual situation to see a drug like this produced and then almost exclusively bought out by a single nation. But you can imagine, given the pandemic and the case numbers rising, especially in the U.S., uh, why this has occurred. The European Union two weeks ago approved the use of remdesivir. The only problem is they can't get their hands on too much of the drug right now. That's causing some concern among European parliamentarians, for example, some of whom have said, hey, look, we'll impose uh, what's known as compulsory licensing, which means that we'll allow companies to go around your patent. Uh, and create the drug themselves if we feel it's necessary. Right now, we're not at that point. Germany, uh, the German government has been pretty mum on it and has said that it has some stocks from Desivere and that there's no necessity to uh, issue compulsory licenses yet. Right, and before we let you go, the Western governments today have accused Russian intelligence of uh, trying to steal valuable information about the coronavirus vaccines that they're working on through the hackers' cozy bay. What information do you have for us on that? Yeah, it's sort of a fascinating twist of the whole vaccine saga right now, and maybe not a surprising one. There were warnings from uh, a number of nations months ago that hackers were trying to get into this research. This was a very specific public warning, though, that was released uh, just the other day, saying uh, basically a 16-page assessment released by the UK intelligence services as well as other Western intelligence services uh, naming the specific uh, hacking group uh, that was involved in this, that they believe was involved in this. This is the same group that they uh, that has been alleged to have interfered in the 2016 U.S. presidential elections. Um, uh, research, I, say, I should say vaccine authorities, are saying that there has been no compromised research. The vaccine research itself has not been compromised, but it has possibly been taken. R Russia has responded by, by, by rejecting these claims, and it has also said that actually it's going to buy uh, a number of the vaccines when they come online from AstraZeneca, uh, this group out of the UK and other nations. So um, trying to tamp down this story, but there are concerns that hacking will continue as the urgency grows. Stephen, thank you very much for that report.